Suppose I operate my lawn mowing business from my barn on County Road 123. At this location, I also operate a garden center that sells garden supplies and different varieties of plants. Just outside my store, facing the road, every summer I open an ice cream counter. This ice cream counter is wildly popular with the passers-by and draws a lot of customers. Sometimes it gets so crowded that the number of cars exceeds my parking dot capacity. I have often noticed people pulling in, looking around for a bit, and then driving away. Some of those people might have even been interested in buying bigger ticket items inside my store, but were driven away by the crowd. If I increase the capacity of my ice cream counter, I think I will be able to avoid such lost business. My counter is currently able to serve an average customer in about 2 minutes, so its capacity is 30 customers per hour. Increasing the ice cream counter capacity involves a bit of remodeling. I estimate that the expansion will cost $20,000, but I think I can pay that off quite easily. The variable costs for the ice cream are not very high, and I make a profit contribution of $1.50 on each ice cream sold. I now want to run some numbers to see if I will be able to recoup my investment in a reasonable time frame. I do have other investment options available where a similar investment would be paid back within three years. So I would like the payback period of the ice cream counter investment to be three years or less. Any investment I make is worthwhile only if it can be paid for by the additional or incremental customers that I can generate. My existing ice cream counter is a sunk cost and it takes care of the demand up to my current capacity. It should not be a factor in assessing the proposed expansion. Only those customers that I can serve over and above my current capacity must be factored in. I collect some data on the ice cream sales. I want to estimate how many potential customers I am turning away due to my current capacity limitations. By expanding, I can then convert these potential customers into actual customers. The counter is open for 16 weeks every year, 7 days a week, 10 hours a day. During these 4 months, the flow of customers fluctuates slightly from week to week, as shown. The highest demand in any week is 1050. Meanwhile, my current capacity is 30 customers per hour, or 300 customers per day, or 2100 customers per week. That means I have more than enough capacity to meet my weekly demand. Then how is it that I am still turning customers away? I am really puzzled. My problem here is that I am trying to match my demand and capacity on a weekly basis. What does that mean? Let us say a customer shows up on Saturday and asks for an ice cream. I am busy at that time, but I say, no problem sir or ma'am. I have planned my capacity on a weekly basis, so there is enough capacity for you sometime during this week. As a matter of fact, I can serve you your ice cream at 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Please come back at that time. Can I really serve Saturday's demand on Tuesday? Matching my average weekly capacity with my average weekly demand might make sense if I were talking about a manufacturing process. Demand and capacity can happen at different points in time, but the time gap can be bridged using inventory as long as capacity occurs earlier on the timeline than demand. In such a case, fluctuations in demand can be averaged over the week and the process capacity can be set at that average rate. For an ice cream counter, however, using a weekly time window for matching my demand and capacity is totally inadequate. Here, it is the peak demand that I need to plan for, not the average weekly demand. Even though I have enough weekly capacity to meet my weekly demand, my daily capacity is insufficient to keep up with the day-to-day -day demand fluctuations. On some days, I have ample capacity, whereas on other days, I am turning away customers. So, let me look at the day-to-day -day demand fluctuations. 
Here is the daily demand pattern for the weeks when demand equals 1000 and 1050. In both of these situations, the maximum demand seems to be happening on Saturdays and Sundays. Comparing the daily demand versus the daily capacity of 300 customers per day, I can see that on both these days my demand exceeds capacity. So on Sundays I am turning away 50 customers and on Saturdays I am turning away 100 customers. Therefore each week I am turning away 150 customers. If I can convert these 150 potential customers into actual customers, each week I stand to make an additional profit contribution of 150 times $1.50, which equals $225. Over a 16-week season, I will make an additional $3,600, or $10,800 over three years. Unfortunately, that is not enough to pay back my investment within three years. My investment will be paid back within 5.55 years. So I should not consider investing in the ice cream counter expansion. Wait a minute, am I missing something here? Am I not making the same mistake that I made earlier? Suppose a customer shows up at 11 a.m. on Sunday and asks for an ice cream. I am busy at that time, but I say, no problem, sir or ma'am. I have planned my capacity on a daily basis, so there is enough capacity for you sometime today. As a matter of fact, I can serve you your ice cream at 1.52 p.m. Please come back at that time. Can I really serve the 11 a.m. customer's demand at 1.52 p.m.? Clearly, just like it doesn't make sense to match demand and capacity on a weekly basis, it doesn't make sense to match them on a daily basis either. Let me instead look at the demand on an hourly basis. Focusing on only Saturdays and Sundays, which are my problem days, I see that there are several times during these days when the hourly demand exceeds the hourly capacity of 30 customers per hour. On Sundays, I am not just turning away 50 customers. Rather, I am turning away 120 customers. Likewise, on Saturdays, I am turning away 170 customers, not just 100. Each week, I am turning away 290 customers, not just 150 customers. If I can convert these 290 potential customers into actual customers, each week I stand to make an additional profit contribution of 290 times $1.50, which equals $435. Over a 16-week season, I will make an additional $6,960, or $20,880 over three years. My investment will be paid back within 2.87 years. So I should definitely invest in the ice cream counter expansion. Wait a minute, am I still missing something here? Am I not making the same mistake that I made earlier? Suppose a customer shows up at 11 a.m. on Sunday and asks for an ice cream. I am busy at that time, but I say, no problem, sir or ma'am. I have planned my capacity on an hourly basis, so there is enough capacity for you sometime during this hour. As a matter of fact, I can serve you your ice cream at 11.42 a.m. Please come back at that time. Can I really serve the 11 a.m. customer's demand at 11.42 a.m.? Clearly, just like it doesn't make sense to match demand and capacity on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, it doesn't make sense to match them on an hourly basis either. I need to figure out what the appropriate time window is before even trying to match demand and capacity. The appropriate time window here will depend on how long the customer is willing to wait for my ice cream. Would you wait for 10 minutes? If it's a really hot day and my ice cream is the only one around for miles, then perhaps you would allow me to use a 15 minute time window to match demand and capacity? If my ice cream is really, really attractive in some manner, say because of its special farm fresh flavor, 
then perhaps I could use a 20 minute time window. If I am using an even smaller time window to match demand and capacity, I will need an even greater peak capacity, high enough to meet even the small term spikes in demand. An implication of gearing up for the peak demand is that much of the remaining time I will have a great deal of unused excess capacity. However, if I am able to meet peak demand, I will be turning away fewer customers. With greater capacity, I can serve my customers faster and my customer service level will increase. However, my capacity utilization will decrease and my costs will go up. 